Well, we're in the middle of uh, a miscanthus field, and so miscanthus is a perennial crop that's ideally suited for um, advanced bioenergy production. And it's one of the many types of ecosystems that we're measuring here at the University of Illinois. We're here in the middle of this field standing by what's called an eddicovariance tower. And so this tower has a bunch of instrumentation that allows us to measure what's happening with the wind. And what's going on with that wind has a lot of really pertinent information to what's happening with the ecosystem. And so all the sensors that we're standing by right here are making measurements of traditional weather, like solar radiation, wind speed, temperature, humidity. But we also have a bunch of really advanced sensors that are giving us information about how much carbon dioxide is going up versus how much is coming down. And that's really important to understanding how ecosystem carbon dynamics work, ultimately giving us the opportunity to measure photosynthesis, ecosystem respiration, how much carbon dioxide might be going into the soil and staying there. These types of questions that are really important for sustainability in agriculture. Eddicovariance is a uh, technique that allows us to measure how carbon dioxide and water are flowing between the land and the atmosphere. We have both a set of instruments that measures carbon dioxide and water and complex wind patterns to measure that flow and an enormous number of additional instruments to help us understand those measurements. These are the eddicovariance instruments that are measuring gas concentrations and the movement of wind in three dimensions. Um, that sort of triangular sensor up there is measuring gas concentrations. That's called an infrared gas analyzer. And the um, cage-like instrument up there is a uh, sonic anemometer and it's measuring how air is moving in three dimensions. Do we always want these instruments to be about a meter and a half above the canopy for our field size? Um, so as the canopy grows, we often have to come out here and raise the instruments so that they stay in the same position relative to the top of the canopy. What really makes these measurements um, exciting is that they're done at entire field scales. And so rather than just clipping onto a leaf or putting something on the soil, we're able to measure the breathing of the ecosystem with regards to how much carbon is going in or out. And we do this 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Ultimately, when we're looking at agricultural ecosystems, whether or not they could clean the atmosphere has a lot to do with how um, the plants are growing, the environmental conditions, how the field's being managed by the, by the farmer or the land manager, um, you know, as well as a lot of other factors that come into play, such as you know, pests and diseases and weeds. Uh, but what these measurements allow us to do is to quantify what's happening with the ecosystem to decide whether it's taking this pollutant carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and storing it for short or long term. We uh, have found in our 20-year record um, a couple of consistent things, uh, mostly that management matters. So plants like miscanthus, this uh, advanced bioenergy crop that we're standing in now, they tend to do much better than a traditional corn-soybean rotation in storing carbon in the soil instead of releasing it to the atmosphere. And we've learned that management practices can matter too. Um, so we found that um, reducing tillage can increase the amount of storage of carbon in the soil. Um, and also that modifying rotations or um, introducing burning can also have important and positive effects on the balance of carbon between the atmosphere and the earth. So one of the nice things about um, measurements of soil or direct measurements of the plants is that you're able to quantify very precisely what's happening. But one of the things that you're really missing in those types of measurements is what's happening at a large scale. You can imagine if we were to just dig down right here, we can make measurements of what's happening with the soil. But whether or not the soil right here reflects what's happening even a meter from here, we don't really know. And so ultimately what we're looking at are using traditional hands-on techniques coupled with these what we call micrometeorological techniques. We're able to get a much more holistic view of what's happening with these agroecosystems. Right now, a lot of farmers, in fact, most farmers, are going to have at least some basic measure of what's happening with weather. What these sensors do is it takes it another step forward, which allows us to know what exactly is the direct impact that this weather, or the climate at any given point in time, is having on the ecosystem as a whole. Is, you know, how much water is the canopy using? You know, how, um, how is that water use 
translating into soil moisture availability. How are the plants responding to, for example, a drought or an excessively wet time period? Understanding not just how the plants work in isolation, but how those plants respond to a wide variety of conditions um, is something that um, farmers may use to plan their own management.